of you, I don't know the English so much, that don't matter. Uh, I'm sitting here thinking, probably the presence of the Lord is over over someone, maybe different one. And you're feeling something maybe that you've not understood or what to do or how to do. I had to sit there thinking uh, that uh, I've got a farm, people like cattle, and certain cattle. And I control most of them with one little strand of electric guitar about me having it. And there's probably not a one of them if they wanted to jump that or run through it. But because the boundaries there, they're afraid to loose themselves and go into wide open country and have everything that, that uh, more grass, more hay, where it may be. And we as Christian people, we've been taught to just come in, sit down, behave yourself, uh, not raise a hand, not praise the Lord, not clap our hands not say glory or whatever it might be, and, and through fear of nothing no more than a little 17 gauge bar, I can keep a 2,000 pound bull behind that in that bay. And the devil uh, has set, or, or religious systems has set bounds around us, and we're, yeah. we're afraid to think Amen. that we're going to get a little out of order, yeah. or raise a hand, or somebody's going to get emotional, or whatever it might be. But I thought if we could pull the covers back off of this world, and we can sit up on the throne that God is sitting on. We can look down and see the evilness that's in this world, the distress, the trouble that people's in. Uh, we've got a country that, that the, the young people, my son preached on here the other night, 50 years ago, the crimes that you heard the 25 year olds was committing. This day and time, 8 and 10 year old children are committing the same crimes. And, and the society has went just about as far as it can go. Yeah. And it's time for us to kick the bounds of religion out of the way, get our traditional thoughts, get anything that we feel like that we might possess as a knowledge, and get our minds set up on God and our affections on things above, and start realizing that it's a do or die time like it's never been in, in, since the creation of time. We stand in a place tonight where no mankind has ever been. You know, this is a brand new day, brand new service, and the generation of people that will be standing upon this earth when this eastern sky split open and we see the Lord appear, those people are going to be a particular prepared people to meet that day. And we're going to have to be a glorious church. And we ought to have enough mind about us to know that when it's worship of God and the songs are going, and whoever it might be, I don't know who you are, but somebody, no doubt, had a quickening heart or something pulling at them to stand up. And well, maybe grandma didn't stand up or daddy didn't stand up. Probably husbands and wives in this house, one has never watched the other one pray. Maybe right in your homes. Uh, just, just, just such a decision, such a divide. And it's such a, a shame, if you want to call it that, or a pride, to kneel before God. Folks, our babies, our young people, our teenagers, they are at our mercy. If us, the church, does not prevail and bring victory and conviction and, and long after to see these lost people on these altars and come in here, we need the yoke broke and it's going to be broke by a praise to God. Right. Folks, He is worthy. He deserves everything that I can give Him. And I, I'm telling us, folks, it's I'm telling what we're going to see in this country day by day, Brother Herschel. I expect to see something. If it don't come today, I expect to hear bad news tomorrow. I'm not telling you gloom and doom, but folks, we went about as far as we can go. This right. thing can't keep it going. Amen. It can't keep a time. It came the, the chaos and all the things that's going on. Uh, us promoting it, or our political system, not us. Promoting the things that they're promoting. Turning their eyes and backs on God. Folks going out to all the perversion of this world. It's only going to bring the judgment of God upon this country. We just as well get ready and, and, and start seeking God, folks, and start loving Him. Did you realize, just as, as sure as I'm standing here one of these days, when this is all over with, and I go to heaven or have to stand in and wait, I'm going to lay my eyes on Jesus for the first time. That should excite us. Folks, Amen. one of these days, we're going to stand before the man yes. that we say we love with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right, right. We say we serve Him. We right. say we live for Him. We say we walk for Him. They ought to be a praise in this house. Right. They ought to be a glory in this house. Right. We are Christians. I am Christ-like. I'm called an ambassador of God. By the privilege and the mercy of Jesus Christ, Amen. about 30 years ago, He said, Come unto me. Yes. I answered the call. I repented of my sins. And folks, by simple obedience, I told this the other night. One time I was sitting, just a young man who just had started praying a few weeks, sitting way back in an auditorium of about 400 people. 
And I had prayed before, but the Lord bid me to pray. Honey, He might be bidding you to come to this altar, and you might say, well, I'm done saved. Big deal. Big deal. Folks, I hit my knees every time He's one of them made. Yeah. If you'll mind God and be obedient to Him, yeah. and put Him first in your life, and break the yoke that's in you, I'll guarantee you, folks, it won't hurt you. you got a child that's lost, a grandchild, a husband, a yeah. son, however it would. Why in the world we as people need God to fix our homes? When it comes time to pray, why can't we line these altars? Yeah. Why can't we break the door? Why can't we knock the bounds down? Folks, there's nothing but just a little bit of fast water. Yeah. Why can't separate us from the glory of God? You think about that. Just a little old desert water. I had a big old bull, folks. He probably stood 16 or 17 hands high. You can keep him back with a little water that high. He could have stepped over any time he wanted to. People worry about the sign. You can call it uh, whatever you want to call it. Amen. Jesus don't care what you call it. Amen. 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 Apart from me, you that work iniquity. Yes. Jesus is coming. It's on that time. I tell my people day by day they need to run for their lives. It's coming to great trouble. You're going to hear a sound that you thought you'd never hear. It's a coming to this land. And my people's got to look up and wonder what to do. But I said you better pray and seek while you can. But I said trouble is on the way. It's a word in the building tonight soon to be made manifest. I said I said the trouble is made The Bible said the spies not prophesying. Folks, yeah. that comes out of heaven to see short and sing a song. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Honey, that's the work in the church of God, my friends, if you yeah. please. Amen. That's the glory of God shining upon his people. Blessed be the name of the Lord that he would tell us something. Yeah. Blessed be the great name. Hold on to his name, folks. Honey, Jesus is coming. We love it. That's just all the way that it is about it. Yeah. Honey, if you're doing unrighteous things, you are unrighteous, and, and you cannot know God. Folks, just know a little tingly feeling, praying a little bit, bouncing along, happy go lucky in church, out of church, go if it feels good, filthy thoughts in your mind day by day. God does not occupy that type of place. No. You'll stand in at this straight gate because even if that man is seen to him, I'll be able. Yeah, Woo. amen. That's right. It's a sobering thing. Amen. The thing of what this is going to be. It sobers me, Pastor, to know yeah. what it's going to be one day that this little man right here yeah. is going to have to give account of every word, amen. every thought, every intention, yeah. everything that I've ever done, yeah. everything that I didn't do, stand before a man that knows the thoughts of the intention of my heart has the ability to put me in a lake of fire or in eternal glory. Yeah. Jesus is coming, folks. Amen. We need Him more than we need tomorrow. Yeah. We are not in this Amen. place until we know that our sins have been forgiven by the blood of that lovely Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. How can you live in sin if Jesus has been you telling you to come on in His lake? This world, folks, is soon going to fold and tumble. That's right. It's going to roll like that. He says it can't roll. And it's going to roll. This world is coming apart, folks, and we better get ready if we're ever going to. If we're ever going to get the glory of God in our life, we better lay ourselves down. We better start seeking God with all of our strength. Amen. We better decide we want all of Him. Amen. Sign coming. Jesus says destruction is nigh this land. 
You're going to wake in a day soon and you're going to hear troubles you thought you'd never hear. I said, it is on the way in a few days you're going to know that I've told you this time. I said, great destruction is going to speak and then he's going to be able to know that I've told you. It's coming now. Yes. I tell you, it's coming. Jesus says, get ready. Get ready. Pray, folks. One of these altars is ready. If I know, think about this. Think about this, Brother Hurst. Think about this. By civil obedience and coming unto Jesus Christ, that His bidding for me come. I come repenting of my sins, folks, and through the process of time of being all that He wanted me to be. Totally give me my life. He sat down and He took a little quill and He wrote my name. Yeah. Amen. In the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Honey, you think that ain't worth something? That's worth eternity. Amen. And honey, is your name there? Is your name there? Hey, look at these youngsters sitting over here. What a glorious thing. That's right. Look at these older people sitting around. What a glorious thing. That's right. I want to tell you something, honey. Destiny and eternity is before us all. And if we don't have God sweeting our life, worshiping Him, serving Him as a nature, and as a sense through our life, folks, it's not begrudging me. It ain't no old church time. I'm going to have to turn this foolishness off and get up and go. Honey, if you get on your out on your knees throughout this day and longing for this service and praying and seeking God. Amen. Oh, break this yoke. These babies need a Amen. Savior. We need the anointing to come in this house. We need Jesus' presence. We need to see the glory of God fill this house and bring a tear and a mourn upon everyone and bring a conviction upon our children. Yes. If God, if we don't reach God for the mercy of conviction, to bring our people down to pray, we'll bury them in sinners' graves. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. You're right. Honey, we need God when we need yes. our next breath. Yeah. 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 Think about taking the bounds of religion now. Folks, if I sit here this young lady, I don't even know her name. I was telling some other day, a pastor friend of ours we talking to. I said, I don't know who the young lady is, but I said, Boy, she's got a hold of God. Yeah. Amen. Don't know her name. Don't know where she goes to church, don't know nothing about that. But I watch the Spirit of God, honey, all over this young lady sitting around here. Yeah. I see her get up in this corner rejoicing. She didn't know whether to run, jump, wind, or watch, scream, holler, bounce. She didn't know what to do. Yeah. And that's the way God is. Yeah. He can get all over you. You try to run two directions at once. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Amen. Amen. Oh, God. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. We need more of that. Yeah. Honey, we, what we need is an outpouring of the Holy Ghost power of God Amen. where we right. lose sight of where we're at. Amen. Honey, where they come in here in the morning and say that a bunch of idiots down there has lost it. And they got the Mayor Burgesson squad out here lined up beside me. Everything coming in here to see what happened to us. I yeah. tell them this is exactly what happened to me. I got a hold of the Father. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing wrong. Honey, it's just the glory of God that's right. in this house. Yeah. Honey, did you know the place one time I said, pray the show. It rocked. It done what it did. I tell you what, this is a power of God, folks. We come under the obedience of His will. Praise Him like we need to. This building can rock. That's right. You hear what I'm telling you? I've been about the presence. Brother James, you've seen it too. I've watched that little pink, bluish looking color smoke come right down in the building, folks. And I've been there for just a time or two. Long to see that again. Honey, when people begin to praise God, hold them hands up, begin to worship Him. I've watched the lights go dim. I've watched the cloud come in the building. God is as real as He you say, oh, you serve him like that if you want to. Come on. Honey, you can sit and rip the seats up there and dry up and die out and never know who God is. Honey, this is twice in my life. One time I went to church, hurt me so bad. When I thought was at work, I couldn't wait to get home so that I could go to bed. Honey, my, I don't know what the world was wrong with me. Hurt, terribly, terribly hurt. And I got home, and there wasn't no angel come hovering down out of the ceiling. There wasn't nothing push me. There wasn't no big audible voice. It's that little still thought. Come to my mind. Yeah. I'm going to church. 
Well, I could have had myself out. I ain't able. I can't do shit. Yeah. But I got ready, folks, and I went to church. I was sitting right about there before the service ever started. Then I saw the pastor got up and said, I feel like praying for people's backs. But I didn't jump up and say, that's me. Yeah. But so one of them come up here and they started praying for his back. I come and stood right here and was praying with them. And then somebody come and laid their hands on my back. Oh, they began to pray for me. I went home, got up the next morning. That's been gone and it has never returned. Honey, <laughs> simple on me. You know, when it looks impossible, when it looks dark, when it looks like there's no hope, when it sure as there's a God in heaven, all he's got to do is say, be whole. That's all he's got to say, but he's got to have a vessel he can speak through. He can't talk to you. You entangled with the affairs of this life. Honey, all wrapped up been sin, double-minded, in and out, up and down, full of lust and all this deceitful things. He can only Amen. use a vessel of hand as sanctified and meet for his use. Yes. Amen. 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 That's right. Honey, we can command, we can rub, we can quote, we can do everything we can know to do. But all it takes is simple obedience. Yeah. Honey, I heard a man testify one time. He was in a revival somewhere. And a lady said, well, the Lord told me that you need to go pray for my daddy, he called him, which was her husband. Where's he at? He's in the insane asylum. Lost his mind. Up there didn't know anybody was in the world. Folks, probably Alzheimer's. Well, he played off from there too. He finally got enough nerve. They went up there and they brought him in. They had to make him sit down. He was so gone. He didn't know how to sit no more. So he sat him down in a chair and this preacher. Honey, having lived a life until that day, had come and just laid heads on him. And so many certain words said, Lord, heal him. Yeah. He didn't quote no scriptures, right. scriptures, rub on him, beat on him, pat on him, stand there. He said, all right, take him back. I'm ready to go home. Well, the wife said that had a fit. Thought he should have done something more. Went home. Two days later, I believe it was, the phone rung. The wife on the other end in hysterics and said, my son is on the way to Houston to get him out of the hospital. He's sitting on the bed saying he's wanting to go home. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Amen. God Simple you. obedience. Yeah. Asking God to do what you can't do. Yeah. Amen. Folks, if you can't do it, you can't. Jesus is soon coming. Soon coming. Dad. Think about that. Yeah. The Savior we say we love. Yeah. If we're not careful, we're not even looking for Him. Amen. Not even not. And people say we don't know when the Lord is coming. The Bible tells you exactly when He's coming. Thank, thank In our you think Thank God. Yeah. 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 That's what He's coming. When they start saying peace and safety, you oh, better come out and say, Here I am, Lord. Yeah. Honey, let's get ready. Let's, 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 let's knock the bounds down. Folks, you've got to move. I told him here the other night, any man or woman that ever got saved in our life, James, come on. when the Lord saved you and put you in a seat back there, yeah. If you had never come out of there, you'd have never been a preacher. Never. You'd have never sung the first song. You'd have no. never prayed for the first sit. That's right. You'd have never done the first thing. No. But if He didn't save you to set you in a seat where you fold your hands and say, This is my gift and my calling. Folks, I've never heard of the gift of sitting. <laughs> I've never heard, heard of the gift of doing nothing. Oh, Honey, they, they should be. You, you say, Well, I don't feel to praise God. I'll tell you one thing. You spent three hours, honey, in the Garden of Gethsemane yes, praying that this cup would pass for me. He didn't feel like he'd been going out there and being made fun of, but he'd done it because of me and you. Yes. And because he did, I should have a hand, a hand raise of praise. Amen. I should be able to thank him just a little bit. Amen. I'll tell you what, the most honest praise that I ever did in my life, it, it's, not, it's not hard. When that music melts that soul and you're over here raising, you're in season and you're feeling the goodness of God. But what about you been in the valley for six months? Uh -huh. You yeah. pray and you feel like God is nowhere. Right. But you're striving, you're pressing, you're praying. And there you sit on that seat and that song to sing it, and you feel like you're not even in the building. Come on. Yeah. You can stand and say, I thank you, God. Yeah. Honey, He hears that and appreciates that. Yeah. We ought to awake and realize that we're in a place that we had better decide that if we're ever going to praise God, we better do it. I'm not talking about a show. No. Right. Honey, I'm not talking about that. I've been in a service one time, preach God up, and had them all hyped up, you know, broom, broom, broom. Here we go. He said, I want three people. Give me three people right quick to hit this floor and run. Well, three monkeys done it. Yeah. Yeah. Honey, God don't need me to tell you no. to accept you. He wants you to run behind the Spirit of God. Amen. He wants to bless you in the Spirit of God. Amen. It's not some type of excitement that moves you. Honey, it is the realness of God. The realness of God. The realness of God. So what we need to do is take that little war boundary down. Yeah. 
Honey, yeah. and, and, and move the bounds of religion. I thought of this. I'll hush. Let God preach to you. <clears throat> 1400 Father still goes 92 I guess it was did you realize up to that time they thought that the earth world was flat yeah did you know probably more than likely Paul Peter yeah the early disciples thought the world was flat yeah think you think on that you think like that yeah well if they never had decided that we can go beyond what we've been told they never would have realized that the world Earth was cramped with rain. If you never take that boundary down yeah. and start listening to God tell you, yeah. and then Psalms is going on, that little thing is saying, don't you walk up front and hold up your hands. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you never learn to be obedient to that, you will never know the greatness of God. No. Amen. You will live your life bound to the system. Amen. We need to move the boundaries. Remove what we, what somebody's told yeah. us it is. I could care less what somebody told me to tear down my faith. I mean, God is able to do exceedingly above and above that which I ask the thing. According to the power that works yeah. in me. I believe him for anything. And I'll, I'll just tell this. And this check me, folks. This was real. Okay? Real. Do we have the love for our brothers and sisters? That we want to see them receive what we've got. My brother sitting back right here in the back seat, up here in these songs, he's talking about a certain age, lost his arm, he's been his whole life in that condition. I sat there and I just prayed. I said, God, you can restore him an arm. I said that. Just as sure as I said that, as a voice spoke to me and said, Would you give him one of yours? Huh. Would I? Would I? Would I do that? Honey, they said, Jesus Christ to give more than an arm. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Honey, let's listen to the Word of God tonight. Let's pay attention. Every saint in this house, as this preacher preaches, you pray that this yoke be broke. There's people in this house that's lost, that's undone without God, yes. that needs repentance in their soul, and they need to be on this altar. Right. And if we cannot mourn for that, cry for that, and desire that, then there's something wrong with me. Not, wrong. Right. Not one thing wrong, Not wrong. I think, done last night, filling these altars right there to preach and to help, Rob said it did. Folks, the most important part of this service is getting ready to come to you right now. That's so when this mouthpiece of God speaks to you. He brought you here to hear what he had to say. So let's pray. You know, if somebody playing on the cell phone calls and that, we can have them turned off. Yeah. We, we don't need that. Amen. But there's no place for that. Yeah. So it says this mouthpiece of God comes to us and begins to preach. Let's pray for us. So Amen. here it is. Amen. Brother Ralph Morris. Yeah.